Hi, I'm Lisa Corbett, fine art painter and video maker. One of the things that drives me as an artist is the desire to save the lives of interesting people, most of whom don't happen to be famous. These people are everywhere if you look for them. They are creative, articulate, and charming. They are often thought of as colorful characters who dress and speak in eccentric ways. Some are poor and on society's fringes because they are different enough that it's difficult for them to fit in with the rest of us. Joseph Kenny is one of those people. When I first met him, I was impressed with his great height, his Rastafarian hat and curls. The tie-dyed shirt and the patchwork vest made him look like an original hippie. He walked with a big stick in a slow, dignified manner, like Gandalf and Lord of the Rings. He talked like a spiritual seeker with a certain wisdom gained from having had a rough life. Joseph seemed to me like a person who was meant to live briefly and brightly. A strong inkling kept bugging me to document this man. At first, my idea was to do a portrait painting but I knew it wouldn't be sufficient to capture his spirit. So I did an interview with him on video in October 2016 at the Dinosaur Tattoo Studio in Waukegan, Illinois. Here's the video with examples of Joseph's art, which I hope one day will be famous. Thank you. Oh, that's fine. Whatever you wish to say. You want to see the other one? Sure. Yeah. Show off those tattoos with pride. That was great. So, did you get all those tattoos here? I did. Every last one of them. Oh, really? I didn't know that. It looks like they have a meaning. They do for me. A great, a great deal of meaning, actually. Yeah, I imagine that. It's, uh, well, it's a combination of things. It's Greek. You know, uh, so they had if I'm getting my I had it on my own arm, I better be able to talk about it. And uh, this one to be dragon seer. Oh, okay. And uh, this one is mercy. And mercy, okay. Mercy. And, and the one on your neck? Hmm? This one? Yes, right here. It's just a little thing where I basically set up, set it up. It, it goes, you could translate it as, uh, this is Joseph. Joseph. Really? <laughs> Something along those lines. <laughs> Can't stop being Joseph or Yahweh, one of, whoever it is. You know, they're, all, they're all one thing anyway. Well, I remember when I first saw you and you had this everything you had on was really colorful. I asked if you were, it was like the uh, coat of many colors, mm -hmm. Joseph. Joseph, yeah. yeah. I, I, I like that, I always did like that. Yeah. That was the other time I was in a play, I was rowing a boat. No, I wasn't, I was gonna say, but there's a little demon in my head that's saying, you were naked in the boat, just like the last time. No, no, anyway. I was naked in the movie once too. I was an extra. Uh -huh. And they decided I wasn't fat enough, so I didn't make it in the movie. <laughs> I thought, okay, I can live with that. That was, I lived in Dallas, and I was a, you know, if, if you're in our community, they always, every once in a while, you hear, oh, you can go over and make some extra money. Mm -hmm. I, you know, one thing I constantly yearn for, and have done for a long, long time, uh, is community with other artists. Yes. There's also this part of me that pulls back, you know, and it's like, yeah. Well, I think that's, you know, normal for being an artist. I mean, part of you wants to get out there and part of you just yes. wants to be with yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah, up on the mountain. Yeah, exactly. Mount you ever been to Mount Chester? Mm, not yet. Oh, you should go. You should go. I lived up at about 6,000 feet and, uh, in a yurt and the bears and the cougars and, and, and all of those things. I bet that was wonderful. I mean, you must have felt really peaceful. 
I felt like, uh, well, it's kind of, well, it's kind of <coughs> hard to express. It was like, this is the way nature is. This is nature. Mm -hmm. So if the bear comes and wants to eat me, hear him. Or the bobcats want to jump, jump me. I tried this before, actually. And I got a big lamp um, going up to Mount Shasta City, or, which is not a city. It's a little town. Uh, going up. And I had this lantern, and I dropped the lantern for two days. Knock it out, it kept burning. But the light shined up and on this big branch. Uh, two fingers, you know, staring at me like going. Okay. Yeah, natural. I mean, so, you should have every single right to eat me, and I should have to eat you. Yeah, I just, you know, in theory, I can see it, but in actuality, yeah. I'm a little too fond of my bod to have it. You know. yeah, uh, I don't think I can make 6,000 feet up for one time. One night. I've got to tell you the story. This is the best story. It's okay, I'm recording this. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I moved up you know, to what became home. Uh, and within the first few days, it was a, without, there was no moon. Okay. And I was in my yurt, and I heard this thing that sounds like, sound like bulldozers coming down in the mountain. And, and, but not swiftly, coming down at its own pace. Just kind of smashing things apart, apart right? Mm -hmm. And it's like Godzilla. <laughs> you know, like Godzilla. Yeah. And I hear it coming down off the mountain, and it's moving. It's kind of like zigzag. And then it comes right up to, I was living on, on this, in the earth. And there was a scream. That's all it was was a scream. I couldn't stop anything hardly. You know, this huge head. And because it was dark, you couldn't see it. You could just hear the crumble and the crack and feel the, the uh, you know, shake. And then it came up and it pushed the nose out and went. And it went. And, was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, and that was it. And that was it. <laughs> Just wanted to check you out. Eh? He wanted to see if I was a, a you know another bear. Oh, know? it was pitch black and tell. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Were you scared? No. I mean, there's lots of things that happened that I haven't spoken to. I know you understand those processes. Yes. Um, when they come to eat, if they win, they deserve to eat. You know what I mean? Yep, I do. <laughs> if they can't pull that one off, God bless them. <laughs> but if they can't pull it off, they're going to get out of my way. I'm an old man, but they got a big stick. You do have a big stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, had you ever thought about on another subject? I kind of wondered. I know you really wanted me to see your artwork. I mean, um, I don't know. I, I, the place is What's the word I'm looking for? Shoving? No. It sounds like vaguely Hebrew. Uh, Sloven. Slovenly. Okay. Slovenly. It was just the last four or five months of being bad, to be frank. Uh, uh, I was wondering if it was checkout time. You know, I started to get you know, but it's still going to be, you know, I got like 30 seconds of push in me. I got to yeah. I mean, I, 30 seconds, things are going to you know, split wide open. Or, I'm like the bear. You know. <laughs> and I pushed, pushed in. And I pushed back. <laughs> and he left me alone. That is incredible. I mean, that you didn't panic or anything? That's great.
No, I was just like... Yeah. You still tried to kill me. I see. By comparison. Right? And when I go, it's my turn. Say I love you. That's true. So, where are you from originally? I mean, McKinney sounds like an Irish name to me. McKinney. McKinney. Yeah, well, it's uh, that's a long Okay, maybe for another time. Story. Yeah, that's really convoluted. Kind of